Okay, hello, we're rolling and welcome to the first, possibly of many, possibly first and only uh, KMP Digitata uh, Digital Transformations podcast. Um, delighted to be joined by Fraser Ralston from AGS. Hi, Fraser. Hi, Jez. Thanks very much for having me on. No probs. Um, so I thought we'd use this opportunity to have a chat about you know, how we work together, what you guys do at AGS and talk about a little bit about digital transformation, what that means to you and what it means uh, for your organization going forward. So perhaps you want to give me a bit of a background as to who you are, uh, who AGS is and, and, and what you guys do. Yeah, of course, Jez, of course. So hi, everyone. I'm, my name is Fraser. Uh, I head up the digital team for, for AGS Airports. Um, the team has only been in existence since I think it's 2018 uh, and we've achieved so much uh, throughout that period of time. It's quite scary to think how many different systems and new websites and things that you guys have actually helped us put into place, which is which is just quite remarkable. But way back in 2018, we decided to change our digital strategy for AGS and we had the backing from our kind of exec team and we managed to transform how we how we work and obviously our relationship with KMP has been going for for several years I think it was since 2015 isn't it Jez it's been or, or 2014. Uh, possibly even earlier yeah but my, my memory is not that good I think 2014 2015 sounds about right to me. Yeah because we started off with Aberdeen Airport first and then we gradually brought the other ones on board with the group and you know we've we've now changed things haven't we we've we've now completely aligned the websites and uh, there's some really nice little bits of tech that are coming up including the new voice and chatbot as well which is great so tell me obviously ags runs uh, aberdeen glasgow and southampton airports uh, and you can't get more real world than an airport in terms of you know it's a huge piece of infrastructure um there is no kind of digital pivoting you know you can't replace the, the existence of a physical airport you couldn't get more real world than an airport so what do you do uh, in the in the digital space um you know how do you use digital operations for this as part of this very real world offering yeah i mean working for an airport is is brilliant i mean just to hit off at the past the being able to look out the window and actually see your passengers see the people who are kind of touching uh, all of your different uh, digital assets is, is incredible and I, i've done a, a lot of work before with hotels and in previous roles and it was always a case that we were in a different office and maybe in even a different country than the the, than, uh, the client we were serving but being able to look out the window and actually seeing uh, you know all your passengers that are are using all of your digital assets is brilliant but for me you know working in an airport you know you've hit the nail on the head it's extremely busy it's hustle and bustle it's a 24 seven operation it's, it's never it never sleeps um it's on the go 365 um and anything can be thrown at us at any time uh because obviously we've got the luxury of, of passengers coming in and out as, as they normally do but you know sometimes even emergencies come along which is where digital not only helps with the day-to-day -day, but also helps with the reactory types of things that we need to need to need to cater for and you know using digital and using all the different touch points we, we have a really strong goal actually Jez, as part of our digital strategy strategy which is to create a world-class frictionless digital passenger experience which is really really key for us uh, and every single digital asset that we roll out whether with you guys or with with other uh, chosen partners we want to make sure that it's completely um world class and we want to make sure that it is totally frictionless because there's nothing more annoying if you're wanting to get onto that airline or want to get onto that plane and the bits of information that you need to know there and then aren't available at your fingertips because you know travel for us is is, is seamless you know obviously covid has massively changed that hence us doing this from our homes obviously rather than doing it from the actual airport i'd love to be showing you around and you know doing a, a video tour and, and all of those things but that has again changed the dynamic and added, added another layer of complexity to what is you know the airport speed i, I have to be honest with you i absolutely love it um there isn't a a better place to work in my opinion i've worked up with a lot of great companies uh, but i love working for the airport and I, you know and being able to help with digital and that is 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 really really rewarding i like what you said there about um uh a, a real world digital frictionless experience and 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 i might ask you to expand on that a, a little bit later sure. but um coming back to so one of the things that uh i am really excited about and i hope you can tell us a bit more about it is how we how we help passengers you know what 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 do we do to what do you guys do to say right how can we make the the passenger journey better how can we use digital to make it better and one of the things that um 
uh, has come up recently is the idea of uh, uh, vo uh, voice operated technology, Alexa apps, all that kind of stuff. And I believe that um, you guys and, uh, and our team are getting involved with that, with, with that space. Yeah, that's right. Actually, there's the there's some really nice technology that's on the roadmap. But just before I go on to that, there's some really nice things that I, I want to highlight as well, um, including things like the airport timeline. So this was something that was originally conceived way back in I think 2016, and it was part of that mission to create that kind of frictionless digital passenger experience, well, clash this should say frictionless digital passenger experience, and. Coming out of that. So, what, sorry, sorry, Fraser, to interrupt. Can you explain that a little bit more? Um, I, 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 I was involved then, so I know a little bit about it. But if you could expand on on what you mean by the timeline. So the timeline of events was that we had a, a large digital roadmap that spanned five years. So back in 2018, when we created the digital team, that's really when we set about this goal, um, which was to create this frictionless digital passenger experience. But we were actually already doing that in previous years. We were making sure that we could have you know, the best experience online possible to make sure that the information was at the passenger's fingertips at every point of their journeys, whether they're traveling to the airport, if they're, they're in the airport, or even if they're at their destination and about to come back. So that was really what spawned uh, a lot of the good work that was done originally on the Aberdeen Airport website, whereby we created a timeline that contextually changed based on where you were in the passenger life cycle. So if you, just, if you, if you think about it for a second, if you're traveling, there's lots of different touch points that you've got as a passenger. You're either engaging with your airline, you're engaging with the airport, you're engaging maybe with your hotel that you're about to go and stay with, or maybe you're even going to stay or you know, engage with Airbnb if, you, if you're staying there, for example. But all of those different touch points have a different relationship with the customer. And you've got to make sure that if you are creating a really good digital experience, that it provides the information at the right time to the right person at the right point in their journey. But it's almost got to be on tap. So we you know, had a really great session with you guys uh, back in 2017 and we rolled out this timeline in Aberdeen, which was to huge success. We, we changed the front end of the website and uh, we used a completely different user experience. We, we changed how the timeline and also how the, the flight information, which is the number one piece of information why people come to our website and at all of our touch points, if I'm honest with you, which makes perfect sense. But we changed that and we encouraged users to tell us their flight information and by sharing their location with us completely above board and, and fully GDPR compliant, we were then able to then provide the correct information to the passengers at the right point in the journey. And you know that took off in 2017 and then beyond. And we've since rolled that technology into all of the other websites. But we're wanting to take it to the next step. I mean, if you if you just look at uh, you know the hype cycle with Gartner and all of these fantastic technology suppliers, you know AI automation, voice and chatbots, they're just the norm now. They're completely uh, a normal thing for 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 people to engage with. And I and I know uh, myself that you know I'm I'm really lazy around my house. I've got a smart home. I've got you know uh, a connection at the front door. If I get a parcel from Amazon, it opens up and I've got the camera. I've got uh, you know Alexa's in every room looking to make sure that they don't speak back to me during this <laughs> <laughs> it always happens but you know we live in a world where this is just normal um, and I, I've got a nine-year-old and she constantly looks and, and speaks to Alexa and asks it questions and I, I'm looking at her and thinking god if she's coming through the airport you know maybe in 10 years time when she's going out on a holiday with her with her friends and, and things maybe they're going to go to Ibiza or something like that you know she's going to want to engage with these technologies and we need to be ready for that we need to be you know in a position where we're cutting edge that we're that we're trying to cut through all the noise and provide really good technology for our passengers and that's really where the the voice and chatbot kind of spawned out from and that has, uh, you know, we, we've only just recently deployed that. We've been doing a number of different iterations on that. And it's, you know, really exciting to see that just taking off. And, you know, it's a scalable infrastructure that you guys have worked with us to to, to create. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that kind of pans out in the next, uh, in the next couple of months. So tell me a little bit more about the decisions as to why you decided to go down the, the, the chatbot route, you know, what you thought it brings to the party and, uh, you know what bits of the of the digital uh, makeup you, you thought were missing to that could be filled by fulfilled by this. 
Sure. Um, so we felt that it was the right thing to go down the route of using natural language processing. And these technologies are available, they're open source, and being able to tap into that was massively important for us because our passengers are wanting to make sure that the answers are ready for them on tap. You know, they, they ask us a question, we want to be there 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. But it wasn't feasible for us to have, you know, staffing on that level. And don't get me wrong, we are 24 seven operation but if we're able to use technology to answer questions that our passengers have got using already existing infrastructure, then it made perfect sense for us to align that. And, you know, with the great work that we've done on, on the websites and aligning all of the infrastructure, you know, timelines and, and content and all of that really rich detail that's online, we wanted to make sure that we could surface that um, really, really easily. Uh, so that's why we've obviously aligned and, and using uh, not just Microsoft Azure, but also um, Microsoft Lewis, working in conjunction with, your, with yourselves at, at KMP Digitata in order to layer up the, the voice and chatbot. And one of the kind of strategic goals here was not just to create something in isolation, but to create something that would connect in with our, our, our wider data infrastructure. So we've got a middleware that we've created and it will connect into our CRM platform. Uh, so that means we can make sure that we're providing right information out and also right information in but also having it scalable. So that means, you know, down the line, if there is uh, another platform that gets spun up in the next, you know, 18 months or so, we can just plug it in uh, and then it instantly is available on there. So, you know, right now we're, we're available on Alexa on Google Home, uh, or sort of, I should say soon be available on Alexa and Google Home, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, but, you know, within the next uh, three to six months, there's nothing to say that we can't include WhatsApp, we can't include uh, WeChat, um, TikTok, anything else that has, you know, an API based uh, architecture that can accept it. So as long as we can plug and play, then then we're in a really, really good space to do that. Yeah, that's what I like. I'm a bit removed from this project, but that's what I like from what I hear is the fact that it's it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's not trying to be all encompassing. It's piggybacking on existing systems you've got there using APIs plugging into data from the website or from lost property uh, systems, you know, and, and it's it's a really what I really like is that um, you guys went and asked your customer services team, you know, what the main things you get asked is that's, that's right, isn't it? Is that how you came came up with the idea of using it for lost properties? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a mix actually. So we went and, and we asked uh, our customer service team uh, face to face, but also we looked at the data because mm. right now it's coming, it's flowing through the same structure on our CRM platform. So we're able to interrogate that and understand that better. And also looking at all the feedback that we get through the current website and on our social media channels as well, because it's all managed uh, in, in one centralized platform. So that was a massive amount of learning that we took and, and we'll go live with this voice and chat ball first with Glasgow and then we'll be rolling it out into Aberdeen and Southampton later. Um, but the key thing for us was scalability uh, and that's massively important as we move forward and it kind of allows us to make that frictionless experience for the customer because they can be on any device and, and you know they can be on any device but then pick up a conversation on another device but it's all then with the airport it doesn't actually matter about us having a conversation with the customer on facebook on whatsapp on twitter mm -hmm. it's just a conversation with the customer so yeah. it's true it's true omni-channel uh which was which, which we're really really trying to achieve i like to think of it as, as thinking about how to be useful as simple as that you know how yeah. can we be how can we be useful to a passenger uh it's not about just you know making it making a, a a voice app because it's the next thing to do it's the cool thing to do it's like how is this going to help the passenger yeah i absolutely jess we're not making it for the sake of making it we're doing it because it's the next evolution uh because you know we're in the, we're as, as everyone knows we're in the fourth industrial evolution right now it's happening right in front of our eyes so we need to capitalize on it and we need to make sure that you know we're embracing these technologies and that we're just there for the passengers when they need us and that's exactly what our digital team is all about which brings us quite nicely to the uh, unavoidable topic of, uh, of COVID-19 and uh, how that's affected you guys, because it, it, six, six months ago, the world was, was, was really very different. Um, and you can argue that uh, COVID and the resultant messages and changes in, in people's behaviour affects every business, but it's really hard to think of a more affected organisation than an airport. So how does this change your approach? Uh, how does this change what you do day to day? I mean, it's, it's probably... A uh, tough question to to ask at the moment, but uh, no doubt you've been thinking about it for quite some months. So, uh, what what do you think? Uh, that's a fair ask. That's a fair ask, Jez. Um, it's not been easy. I think it's the fair it's the fair uh, thing to say. Um, 
but you know from a digital perspective it actually was an opportunity for us to you know quietly scale down our operation but then actually focus on the real things that mattered so we we took stock very very quickly um of all the different things that were on our roadmap and we actually accelerated quite a number of projects we, we brought forward uh, the creation of the you know, new websites, Southampton and Aberdeen, for example. We also brought forward our kind of code base alignment projects and a couple of other things that we've got on the, on, on the roadmap. And we've now come out, or I say we're coming out of COVID, you know, obviously when this has been broadcast, we're currently in phase three. So I hope, I hope when this comes out, we'll be in phase four. But, you know, we're in a really strong position digitally now, uh, stronger than we've actually ever been before, because we've actually had the time to to go in and focus on these really key projects and bring them forward. Uh, and now we're able to move forward on some things in the roadmap that were originally programmed in for 2022. We brought them right forward. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, that's the blessing in disguise, you know, upfront dealing with the you know the reaction of covid ha has been challenging on the team obviously there's been you know furlough there's been individuals lost along the way with every business uh, across the world so that's something that we always need to kind of always remember and it's obviously awful the fact that so many people have lost their lives to, to coronavirus and i think that's something to always never forget that you know we maybe won't be sitting at home but you know you always have to pinch yourself and say you know i'm really grateful to actually still be here mm -hmm. um, and, and have survived it in, in a way. Um, but I think as a result of this, digital through and through across every every organisation, across every vertical, it has just transformed how businesses function. I mean, digital transformation, if you weren't doing it before, wake up and smell the coffee and get on and do it because if you're not going to do it, your business is not going to exist. Um, and you've seen some really key players, uh, you know, the Debenhams, Marks and Spencers and all of those, you know, huge companies all suffering as a result of this. And as a result of that, um, we're looking at, you know, what retail options have we got in the airport going forward and how can we utilise digital in order to really pull that and pull that forward to give our passengers more options um, you know, could we offer the opportunity for passengers to reserve their, their, their shopping online before they get to the airport? Potentially. Um, can we do the whole thing online and potentially process payments? Potentially. All of that is something that we are really keen to, to look at and, you know, moving forward with the timeline and moving things up the timeline because of COVID. This is the type of stuff that we need to be absolutely focusing on. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because it's one of those things that that, that forcibly shifts user behaviour. And it's going to be interesting to see um, how that affects the passenger journey and, and the enjoyment of people going on holiday. Because, you know, will they miss, you know, having a wander through duty free and running their hands along the various different, you know, trying on sunglasses, all that kind of stuff, which isn't possible at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, how are we going to miss that as, as, as a society? Is that going to be a miss or are we just going to shift automatically, you know, quite happily use augmented reality to uh, to, to try on sunglasses or, or that kind of stuff ahead of actually going to the airport and buying them ahead of time, like you say. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess it's it's hard it's hard to guess. Have you got any thoughts on 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 the passengers and how they're going to be affected and what's the most important thing right now to, to passengers? So I think the biggest concern or the biggest ask of a passenger uh, right now is timely information. So if they if they are about to fly or if they're wanting to ask a question, we need to be there in order to reply to that passenger as quickly as we possibly can. So that's really where the voice and chat bot kind of comes in. Um, and we've got other bots that are operating at the moment to try and provide that information as timely as possible to passengers because, you know, we're, we're under no illusion. If somebody's flying in the next couple of weeks, you know, there may be some nervousness in there. Um, and there's also kind of getting getting used to the normal. So, you know, as humans, we don't really like change. It's just kind of pack and parcel. We all, we all like to kind of settle into things that we know and we love and we do. But specifically with travel and because of coronavirus, there's just been some mandatory changes that have been forced upon us. Of course, like the compulsory using of face coverings, the ability for customers to, to move through a terminal and stay two metres apart and maintain social distancing. And, you know, just like you were saying earlier on, not necessarily being able to try on your sunglasses, that just feels wrong that you're not able to do those things. But, you know, that's the thing for the passenger. If they've got those types of questions, we need to be making sure that we're able to provide those answers to them in a really kind of timely way. The, the second thing that you said there in terms of, you know, making sure the passenger experience is, you know, 
what's it going to be like? Can a passenger try on sunglasses? I think, as I said before, like digital's really going to kind of take passengers' experience to the next level. Uh, and I really like the idea of using VR for trying on uh, some sunglasses. So we should maybe 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 look at that further. Actually, that's a really, that's a really nice one. But you know, using using all of these great kind of digital tools that are at our fingertips. You know, we we're you know. We have more power in our hand than we have in the International Space Station because you've got an iPhone and you're able to do all these wonderful things. Let's use it. Let's absolutely capitalise on it and use it for the for the passenger experience and for the greater good of you know somebody coming through an airport because not everyone's travelling through an airport for for a holiday. You know, there's there's so millions of reasons why somebody may be travelling. But I, my personal view is that we need to begin getting back to travel in the way that we were before as much as we can. So what role does do you have in terms of digital in, in, in order to make a passenger feel safe? How can you how can you help out? Sure. So, you know, feeling safe when you fly is, is so important. And you, know, you can see this with airlines providing information. And so as the airport as well, we have got a massive campaign that's underway to kind of give that confidence back to passengers to, to say we're OK to fly. And, and it's true. But one of the other things that we really need to be making sure that we're doing for passengers is, is providing information in a really timely manner. And the best way to do that is, of course, is through digital. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we've obviously engaged with yourself with the, the voice and chatbot. We've got all of our information on tap with our apps and our websites and you know, on social media and such. But it's really, really important that we can provide that information contextually to the passenger as well, because they might be traveling in the next couple of days time, but they have a question regarding to maybe wearing a face covering, or maybe they have a question relating to, you know, where, where, can, I park my, where can I park my car? All of those things, we need to be ready with all the answers uh, and using you know, like natural language processing and such on you know, the likes of the voice and chat. But we can surface that information really, really quickly, given the, the infrastructure that we've got and providing that information straight back to passengers just when they need it. And, you know, I, I see it as a win that if a passenger asks a question, if we give an answer and that's it, then that's job done for us. That's then that's a, that's a massive win for 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 what we've done in digital because we've we've absolutely satisfied the need of the customer and they're able to continue on with their journey knowing that that question has been answered because that may have been a you know a point of anxiety for them a mm -hmm. point of worry but now it's been completely solved. Um, and moving forward, you know, as we as we go forward with coronavirus and then we start to live with it and, and you know, in day to day lives, it's really, really important that we utilize digital to help with those different touch points and experiences. Because, you know, I, I like the thing that you said earlier on about using the sunglasses with the, you know, the virtual reality headsets. That was brilliant. We're going to have to have a conversation about that, aren't we? I, I, I can see us I, picking that up later. I uh, definitely think that's, that's one for the backlog, I think. OK, yeah. yeah. But I think it's definitely worthwhile, you know, exploring all these different types of technologies. And again, you know, that these types of things have been on the, the Gartner hype cycle for years. And it's now coming to the point that coronavirus has, has just massively accelerated all these different things. And, um, you know, there's some there's some wonderful work being done by lots of different uh, companies around the world using, you know, VR and, you know, even old folks homes right the way through to, to viewing houses. I was viewing a house mm -hmm. through virtual reality earlier on today, no word of a lie. And it's it's something that um, can be absolutely capitalised on, but we need to be making sure that we're using digital technology and innovation to really, really help with the passenger experience as we go forward, because coronavirus is here to stay. It's not going to go away and we need to make sure that we're using technology in the right way to help the passengers. Is it true? I heard a rumour on the grapevine that you had to uh, you had to speak to Amazon to convince them that it was uh, a good thing that you had information about COVID-19 on, uh, on on your Alexa app uh, rather than trying to be spammy. Is, is that yeah. the case? Yeah, this is true, actually. Um, Amazon uh, had to be convinced that we were an airport and that we were needing to provide necessary information for coronavirus. So yeah, you're, you're reliably <laughs> informed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, otherwise they, they, they block it. I suppose it's good that they're monitoring these things. Um, so one last question, Fraser, and I hope I'm not going to put you on the spot here, but so you're sitting in that uh, uh, living room I can see there, maybe practicing your drums and future Fraser uh, from a year's time appears, uh, time travel back from a year in the future to give you some important advice about, about, about your, your, your role at AGS. What do you think he's going to tell you? Keep feeling fast because it's the right thing to do. Very good, I, I like that. You know, I think you'll, you'll never know something unless you try it. And I'm a firm believer of, of failing fast. I mean, we make so many mistakes in a week. I, I can't keep count, but I see that as success. 
because you're never going to be able to find out what the right thing is unless you try something from split testing to trying a new technology to um, you know even testing something very very small if it makes a difference and it makes an impact then keep doing it and refine it and refine it and refine it and keep doing it and for me you know fail fast has always been the motto and you know I think it's something that's really really wise to live by um, so yeah that that would be what I would give myself if I was coming back in a year's time I would just say keep on it and it's okay to fail fast. Good Fraser Wilson from AGS thank you so much um, uh, I've, I've really enjoyed your company and uh, you speak a lot of sense so thanks very much for joining me. Cheers Jed thanks very much. No problem.